Hi, this is Mike Langlois, and today I wanted to give you a bit video blog, and I thought we could have a little bit of fun talking about and doing some show and tell about how to make your office and get weight room gamer friendly. Uh, a lot of times you can just send a few visual cues that will let someone know that it's you know you're interested in gaming and that it's okay to talk about it and that you might actually know something about online gaming or video games in general. So what I would start with is the waiting room. Um, I have a couple of magazines out there in the waiting room that are pretty gamer friendly and send that sort of signal. The first one, which is really, I think, more appealing to adults, is Wired Magazine. If you don't have Wired Magazine, this is a great example of this issue. Um, this issue has an article about where um, you make the gadgets, like iPhones and video game platforms, and the working conditions. So it actually has um, some really kind of thoughtful uh, writing on social justice and how video games interact with oppression. So folks might find this is an interesting topic. Then one that um, I have that is a little bit more just about video games is Gamer, Gamer Magazine. And you can see Gamer has lots of different pictures. It has coupons that people may like. It has different uh, reviews of new games. And so it will give you a lot of uh, topics when people have looked at it in the waiting room and come in all excited about a new video game or one they just got. Um, this one is uh, Game Pro. It's another magazine. And um, it has, this one has, for example, an article on Sonic the Hedgehog and a whole bunch of other things, including World of Warcraft and uh, things like that. I do want to go on the record as saying this, these are definitely very stereotypical images and those are things that we can also talk about in session if a person brings these things up or talks about the covers you can say you know it's interesting do you think people in real life are like that why do you think people look like that in games and often what you'll come up with is some conversation about idealized self-image or um, expectations about a partner and uh, that's always good grist for the mill um, in therapy. So once they get in the office I have a couple of things that um, they might see. For example there's some memorabilia I've got. This is Little Deathwing. Little Deathwing is from World of Warcraft. He is the current arch villain in the new Cataclysm expansion pack. So this is something that can just be out and someone might notice it. And if they do notice it and remark on it, it may tell you a lot about whether they're interested in gaming or World of Warcraft in particular. If they're not, they may just think it's a really cool dragon. So, um, other things I've got, which you might find interesting, is uh, the Nintendo DS. This is an older version of the Nintendo DS. And one of the reasons I like this is because the Nintendo DS has a social component built in. Um, there's a way that each uh, Nintendo DS communicates with another one. And so a lot of times they'll have kids come in and they'll want to use their DS and I can use mine and can either send messages to each other with it, sort of like when you used to play um, telephone with kids and play therapy internships back in the day. Um, also, <clears throat> there's a whole variety of games that you can get. I like the older model of the DS for a couple reasons, and one of them is because I'm cheap, and you can often find Nintendo DS games at a discount if it's a slightly older system. Um, if you're looking for particular games to get on the DS, what I would recommend is the Pokemon series. There's a whole bunch of different Pokemon series, and one of the things that's nice about them is they're always coming out with new ones, and so you can always have a more updated version but there's also a piece in Pokemon where you can trade creatures that you've caught versus that they've caught so that there's an interactive component in there as well where they may have something to give you and you may have something to give your patient in terms of the Pokemon that you've captured. Last but not least I wanted to share with you one more iPhone game. This is one I just got and what I like about this game lot is it's really easy for people to figure out how to play because all you need to do is tap one finger. So if the game is called Tiny Wings and your goal is to take this little bird, see the bird sleeping? And the bird goes down and up hills and if you touch the screen the bird picks up speed and if you let go the bird is able to start flying. So the goal here 
is to keep it going as fast as you can. See if I can get him a little higher for you. So you see the thing to pick up. And so at a certain point you get some wind in, under your wings. And then you can see in the corner, what um, down in the lower corner, there's a little clock, and the object of the game is to get as far as you can, go through as many islands as you can, before the sun sets. And then when the sun sets, night falls, and the bird has to fall asleep. So, there you go. You've got a little speed there. So, one of the reasons I really like this game is because it's very simple for adults to learn how to play and kids. It's very easy to figure out. You just tap, and it's very intuitive intuitive. When you tap the bird's wings closed, it goes down the hill fast. If you let go, then the bird's wings open, it gets higher. The other thing I like about that game is that it, the theme of the game is the bird has to wake up in the morning and fly as far as the bird can fly to explore different islands before night falls. And when night catches up with the bird, the bird falls asleep. And this is a really, I think, a good metaphor for people that are dealing with depression, whether they be kids, adolescents, or adults. How far can they get before their depression really kind of overwhelms them? Are there strategies that they can use to cope with the depression? What does it feel like to continue to kind of have your ups and downs as you're trying to go forward in life and you know that there is depression that you have to deal with that's, you know, lurking behind you sometimes, waiting for you to kind of figure out how to avoid it as much as possible and live life as fully as possible. So that's an example of how that metaphor can actually be very applicable and how that game can be something that can start off that conversation. So again, all of the things that I've talked about today, the magazines, the Nintendo DS, the iPhone game, the little Deathwing, those are all things that are sort of both communications about who I am, but they're also props. As most good therapists know that anything's grist for the mill in our business. And so if you have some of these available, you will be surprised at how many conversations that you can get started. Um, what I would encourage you to do is check out some of this stuff. You can get the magazines pretty close to cheap, to nothing at Best Buy. You can download the Tiny Wings from the iTunes store. It's only 99 cents. And the Nintendo DS, um, you can probably get for under $100 and get a couple of good games to boot. And I recommend a couple of the Pokemon games. So that's it for today. Um, thanks for listening, and hopefully you'll use some of these tips to make your office more gamer-friendly. Take care. Bye-bye.